In this video, I'll be talking about both Iceborne and Gen Yu, what they got right and what they got wrong when it comes to the hunting horn. I would have Gen Yu footage playing in the background, but my HDMI cable for my capture card hasn't showed up just yet. If you like these videos, let me know and subscribe if you haven't already for more like them. But without further ado, let's get started. There really once was a time where hunting horn users had to take the songs a horn had, and remember not only that, but the notes to hit in what order. Even when you get the notes lined up, you aren't told what song it is. Now, you can act like this is something that made the game more hardcore, but it's really not. It was just unnecessary and inconvenient. In Iceborne, we were treated to having our songs in the upper right hand corner at all times, when our weapon was on sheet. I can promise you going from this to Gen U was a huge adjustment, and I hope we retain having your songs on screen at all times in Rise. When you play Hunting Horn in Gen U, as soon as you get a combination of notes lined up for a song, you can either play that song or start to go for a different combination of notes. In doing so though, you'll lose that first song you originally compiled. In Iceborne, this was rectified by letting you build up a queue of songs, three of them at max. As soon as you get the notes together for a song, it'll immediately put that song into your queue. This played extremely well with the fact that putting together the notes for a song didn't erase the notes you've already compiled, so you're able to weave your way through a horn song list in a beautiful, smooth concerto. Now, the hunting horn can do many things, but doing burst damage was never really its thing. Cue the Iceborne update and you have possibly the greatest addition to a weapon's arsenal. The amount of burst damage you can pull off with this attack is insane with the right build. Add in the fact that you can do this rapidly after quick hilt stabs, and you have yourself a move that absolutely needs to be in rise to help keep the horn competitive with other damage dealers. On the topic of the spin and damage, we naturally come to the Echo Wave songs. Both the Dragon Wave and Impact Echo Waves are great for burst damage as well, especially when you stack three of them together and pull off an Encore. The Wave songs and the spin are pretty much handcuffed together. We need one with the other for there to be a solid synergy. I'm still holding out on how they'll throw in something cool like an Echo Slice Wave to do some cutting damage and really bring out the versatility of the horn, but that might be a bit of a stretch. The Impact Wave does some brilliant KO damage, and the amount of damage you can do with Dragon Waves especially on a wake up, is truly insane. Having these songs in Rise would be absolutely clutch. When you play Hunting Horn in Gen U, one of the first things you'll notice is that when you actually hit a monster with a swing, your note will go from a single note to a double note. If you put a song together with all double notes, you're greatly rewarded for it. You will play not only the song you have queued up, but the song you played before it, it's a great feeling of stepping into a fight, pulling off a couple quick X notes, and then having both your self-improvement songs done and your buffs applied. This gives incentive for people to play aggressively instead of pulling any kind of corner duty. The horn in Gen U has a myriad of ways to play multiple notes, and just like the previous point, it helps players to stay aggressive and build up songs quick. With the aerial style, you could play multiple notes while airborne. You could do so after pulling off an adept dodge and more. Having access to playing multiple notes can help you get to the finish line much faster without sacrificing time for damage. In Iceborne, the only chance you had for multiple notes is pressing a button during a double swing, which isn't always convenient and it might not be the best move to make. Genu lets you play any combination of the notes in whatever order. You notice a difference almost immediately with how fast you compile songs. The downfall of the horn in Iceborne is the fact that you only have so many song sets that are worth taking the time to use without dropping off a DPS cliff, and the risk reward of it doesn't stack up well. Let's face it, Attack Up L pretty much dominated Iceborne, and at that, there's only so many song sets that have it, so you'll be using the same sets for quite a while. In Gen U, you have much more song set variety. I've just gotten my feet wet as far as Gen U goes, currently at G2 Quest at the time of recording this, and already there are so many great song sets that are absent in Iceborne. The Grimclaw Horn has a great selection of songs. Not only do you get that attack up L, but you also get great utility through high grade earplugs. Stamina reduced songs literally give you mega dash juice. Defense songs actually seem like they make somewhat of a difference. Healing songs give more than a centimeter of health back. And all of these songs I've been talking about are spread all over the place instead of just using three different song sets on rotate. Oh, and you actually have useful utility songs like Bind Resistance as well. We could pretty much put this point for any weapon in Iceborne, but some of the horns in Gen U are nothing short of immaculate. A personal favorite of mine is the Ketchawacha Hunting Horn, which has a symbol playing monkey on the end of it. 
You don't see any of the weapons getting the bone or iron treatment here either. This not only makes you want to use a horn more, but it also helps to inadvertently push you towards using different song sets. There are some gorgeous horns in Iceborne, looking at you, Tiostra's Musica and Sonorous Iceville, but Gen Yu takes the cake on this one, and it's not even close. Right off the bat, this is going to be fixed in Rise and already has been confirmed. You will now be able to unsheath into any note instead of having to use the X note in Gen Yu or the Y slash triangle note in Iceborne. The only way around this has been to completely stand still and pull your horn out. Now in Iceborne you could do this semi-fluidly, but in Gen Yu you literally could not be moving period. In both cases I think we can all see just how inconvenient that would be. I can't tell you how many note compilations I've had ruined because I had no choice but to swing my horn out of a sheath with the single note that's available. But rejoice, because we are finally getting what we've needed and deserved for so long. All in all, the two games are pretty distinctly different in how they have you play the horn, but that's not to say that one is outright better than the other. I would love to have just a straight up mashup of the two, but I feel like that would be hard to balance and implement. If I had to put things into a priority list, it would probably look like this. One would be songs on screen, two, the spin attack, three, double notes and dual recitals, four, echo waves, five, varying song sets, six, access to multiple notes in a short span, seven, there's pretty much a lot more. We probably won't be able to get everything because that would make the horn a very powerful weapon and we know how Capcom feels about that. But even if we get a somewhat slight mesh of the things each game got right, I'll be highly looking forward to playing the dudes in Rise. The showcase should be coming shortly after uploading this video, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of what I would like to see from the horn in Rise. But that's going to be it for this one. I'm excited, anxious, and ready to see what they're going to do with my favorite weapon in Rise. Hell, they might even throw in something completely new that I'll love. Genu streams here on YouTube will be starting shortly, so stay tuned for that. Discord and Patreon links are in the description below, so if you want to help support the channel, you can do so there. If you liked the video, feel free to hit that thumbs up and help me out. Comment down below what you want to see from the Horn and Rise, and what you think the final product will look like. Subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already for more Rise, Monster Hunter, and other gaming content. Reviews, guides, streams, and more. Dudes forever, have a good night, and happy hunting.